Thank you, gentlemen, for your appearance this morning. Mr. Edgett, I want to discuss Twitter's history uh, of cooperation with our intelligence community. Last year, in an open hearing before this committee, I asked then CIA Director John Brennan about Twitter's decision to prohibit a subsidiary called Data Miner from working with our intelligence community. Director Brennan stated that he was disappointed in Twitter's decision. But at the same time we learned that we learned that Twitter was refusing to work with CIA and the rest of the intelligence community, we also learned that Twitter was pitching Russia Today and Sputnik propaganda arms of the Kremlin to sell advertisements for profit. So in essence, last year, Russia was beginning its covert influence campaign against the United States, and Twitter was on the side of Russia as opposed to the national security interests of the United States. How can your company justify this pattern of behavior to its fellow citizens? We work uh, frequently and hard with law enforcement all the time. Uh, we do have global policies that prohibit the use of our, uh, our data hoses or publicly available data around tweets to, to, for purposes of surveillance. But we allow law enforcement to use uh, data miner and Twitter products around news alerts, first response technology to see what's going on in an area if a, if a, if a 911 call is made and an emergency responder is going somewhere. Uh, but we do not allow surveillance uh, based on Twitter data. Did, did Twitter cut off the CIA and the intelligence community from data miner last year? We asked that our policy of surveillance be applied consistently to all organizations, and I believe that data miner uh, has been enforcing that policy. As, as did to, it cut as, off RT and Sputnik? As to Russia today, when we approached Russia today, last year, uh, to, to talk about our advertising products and to sell them our advertising services, uh, they were approached as a regular media organization, like uh, a BBC or an NPR. Do you consider RT to be a regular media organization? Obviously not now. Uh, coming out of the DNI report earlier this year and the retrospective work that we've done uh, most recently, uh, we don't. And that's why we have banned uh, Russia Today from advertising on the, on the Twitter platform. So there's a difference, though, between the advertising question, which was improvident, and the use of data miner. According to a Wall Street Journal report to which Director Brennan was responding, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey vetoed the data minor CIA contract at the last minute because he objected to the, quote, optics of continuing to help U.S. intelligence agencies. That Wall Street Journal report also said, though, that customers still getting data miner includes RT. Is that an accurate report? John Brennan had no reason to doubt its accuracy. I'm, I don't... I don't have the information, but we'll follow up on, on Russia Today's use of data miners products, which is a third party uh, where we have a relationship. Uh, I believe Mr. Dorsey wanted to make sure that our policies were being applied consistently around surveillance. Do you see an equivalency between the Central Intelligence Agency and the Russian intelligence services? We're, we're not offering our service for surveillance to, to any government. So you will apply the same policy to our intelligence community that you apply to an adversary's intelligence services? As a global company, we have to apply our policies consistently. This reminds me of the old line from the Cold War uh, that of one who did not see a distinction between the CIA and the KGB, on the uh, other hand, because a KGB officer pushed an old lady in front of an oncoming bus, and the CIA officer pushed the old lady out from the path of the oncoming bus because they both go around pushing old ladies. I hope that Twitter will reconsider its policies when it's dealing with friendly intelligence services in countries like the United States and the UK as opposed to adversarial countries like Russia and China. Uh, do you, this, would Twitter entertain the possibility of once again allowing the intelligence community community to use data miner? We, we do today for purposes of news alerts and first response technology, uh, getting information on, on uncertain areas. We do not allow anyone, our policy is not to allow anyone for the purposes of user privacy to use our technology to, to run uh, surveillance. Okay, let's move on to another hostile intelligence services. Uh, other than Vladimir Putin in Russia, I can't think of anyone who's more involved in our, the, influence, the efforts to influence our election last year than Julian Assange and WikiLeaks. Uh, the current director of the CIA, Mike Pompeo, as well as this committee in our annual Intelligence Authorization Act, has labeled WikiLeaks a non-state hostile intelligence service who aids hostile foreign powers like the Kremlin. 
Uh, yet, to my knowledge, Twitter still allows them to operate uninhibited. Is that accurate? We have terms of service and rules that apply to all users, and we'll apply those consistently and without bias. We take action on accounts like WikiLeaks. Is it, and is it other... biased to side with America over our adversaries? We're, we're, we're trying to be unbiased around the world. Um, we are obviously an American company and care deeply about the issues that we're talking about today. But as it relates to WikiLeaks or other accounts like it, we make sure that they're in compliance with our policies just like every other account and have and will continue so if we need to take so, action. So you'll be unbiased towards WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, but you'll take down videos of people like Marsha Blackburn, a Republican running for the United States Senate. Marsha Blackburn's video was never removed from the Twitter platform. Uh, she ran that, that tweet and that video as an advertisement. And we have different standards for our advertisements than we do for the organic tweets and uh, content on our platform because we're serving ads to users who haven't asked to follow Representative Blackburn or others. And we want to make sure that that's a positive experience. And so our, our policies have a different standard. And in that case, we, we had users reporting that it was inflammatory and upsetting, and it was initially taken down. We're making these tough calls all the time. And in that case, we reversed the decision and, and allowed the, the advertisement to continue to run. But we never took down Representative Blackburn's tweet or allowed her not to convey that message to those who are following her and to engage in the dialogue with her. Mr. Edgett, I know that you're the acting general counsel, not the general counsel. And if you were the general counsel, these decisions are made at the CEO and the board of directors level. But I, I have to say, most American citizens would expect American companies to be willing to put the interests of our country above, not on par with, our adversaries, countries like Russia and China, or non-state actors like WikiLeaks or individuals like Julian Assange. Uh, as many other members of this committee have expressed, I think your companies have accomplished amazing things for our country and its citizens and made our lives better in many ways. Uh, I also support the channels that you've created for free speech, especially for some oppressed um, or persecuted people around the world. But this kind of attitude, I would submit, is not acceptable to the large majority of Americans, and it's going to be part of what would lead to unwise or imprudent regulation, not sensible and smart regulation. My time's expired.